If I was trying to find one word to distill Gemini Man down into, that word for me would be awkward. So Gemini Man, a film 20 years in the making, brought to us by director Ang Lee, best known for Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, the 2003 version of Hulk, Brokeback Mountain, and Life of Pi, which is one of my favorite movies. I haven't watched it in a long time, but back at the time when I first saw it, it was like one of my all time favorites. I absolutely adore that movie because as you'll be reminded throughout this review, I am a big fan of 3D. This film, Gemini Man, is a 3D action movie shot in 120 frames per second. It's using high frame rate technology and it basically explores the story of Will Smith as one of these world-class assassins, absolute best in the game, who enters retirement but finds out something he shouldn't know and the company that he essentially works for sends a younger version of himself to assassinate him because no one else can do it. The only way to take out the best is to send another version of the best after them. It's an interesting concept and unfortunately it's one that I think that Gemini Man just does the least interesting things possible with. Now, Ang Lee to me is one of the most exciting directors in Hollywood because he's kind of got this filmography where no two films are the same. He actually, to me, does not have an immediately discernible style. He really is a chameleon who does things in pretty much every different genre he can. And so every time he makes a new movie, I'm always all in on seeing what he does and I'm excited for it whether or not I think it's going to work. I don't really care at the end of the day whether the movies are good, I'm just gonna see them because I like to see him experiment. And in a way, this movie is an experiment. It's shot in the high frame rate, it's in 3D, and that I guess is the draw card of the movie as well as the fact that you're getting a younger Will Smith, basically a digital clone, who for the most part looks pretty exceptional. I've got to say from a technical perspective, this movie really is something. I appreciate the fact it's shot in 3D. I think the, the high frame rate is incredibly interesting. I, I like the experiment side of it. I like the fact that it's not a movie like Life of Pi or Avatar or Gravity that's done with 3D. It's a bit more of a kind of standard action blockbuster. But that might also be its biggest problem for me because it really doesn't have much in the way of... I guess it is just probably for me too much of a standard movie. The script is just a bit of a clunker and you guys know that I love goofiness in action movies. Obviously I like the Fast and Furious movies, I like movies that have that element of over the top silliness, but this one had that kind of just dry silliness, that dry goofiness with just consistently awkward choices, not just in the writing, but in the actual direction where Aang was just framing situations in a very bizarre way that got a couple of unintentional laughs out of me and others around me. It is just a, it's kind of a weird movie when, you know, weirdness could work in its favor. It could give it flavor, but it never feels intentionally weird in that way. There was just a lot of choices where I go, yep, that really was a choice. There's so much time spent with characters talking about who they are and what they can do and what they're struggling with. And it's all just talk. There's so many opportunities where the story, where the film could show us those things. And instead it resorts to characters just driving in a car or sitting at a table and talking about it. And because of that, the characters feel kind of shallow despite how much I thought most of the actors brought to those characters. Mary Elizabeth Winstead and Benedict Wong actually liven up the film a fair bit. And Will Smith is actually in kind of top form as a leading action man. It's just that the characters are kind of shallow. Their relationships are a little bit awkward to me. And for that reason, I just feel like this movie's lacking a lot of the the underlying oomph and the, and the power that I would kind of expect an Ang Lee movie to have. This guy is really exceptional with human drama and kind of finding the human struggle. And this movie just didn't really have 
much of that for me and that was a huge disappointment. Also, as a film with all of this kind of crazy technology, it did feel somewhat underutilized because the locations, yeah, this is a globe-trotting film, but the locations barely ever allowed all of that, you know, technical photography to pop. There's one location in particular that really made the most of it, and that was my favorite sequence of the film. But quite often it was shot in kind of flat locations, and because of how much light you need to pump into a camera when you're shooting at a high frame rate, a lot of the scenes just feel like overly bright. There's not much actual texture to the photography. And then when we're in a dark space, it's just kind of a little bit flat and bland. Something else I do want to mention is that Clive Owen plays, I guess, the villain, and that is a performance. I didn't really vibe with any of the choices he made. He was a very kind of hammy villain, and it was interesting seeing Clive Owen do that kind of thing, but it just felt really awkward in this movie. I almost forgot to mention that if you do see this movie, it needs to be in the 3D high frame rate, otherwise the entire point of the experiment is going to be wasted. Obviously, I am a big fan of 3D. If a movie's in 3D, that is the way I'm going to see it. But with this movie in particular, if you do not watch it in that format, you are just going to be seeing another action movie with a CGI Will Smith. And that's it. I guess as a whole, Gemini Man is just a really awkward movie. There's so many choices that are made throughout it in the writing, the direction, and I guess sometimes even the acting that I just kind of found really, really bizarre and not in a way where I was like, yes, more of that, more of the weird shit. It was just kind of awkward. And because I had that kind of jarring feeling throughout much of it, I did find it not difficult to enjoy. I found it somewhat easy to appreciate, but I just kind of didn't get much emotional investment out of it. I think there's an incredibly interesting story to tell about this character being hunted by his own clone, this idea of almost being hunted by your own past. But I feel like the script missed just about every interesting opportunity available. There's so much that can be done with that. I do have questions about why you wouldn't just cast a young actor and use makeup to make them older, though I think they wanted that feeling of, oh, look at the technology we can use, look at what we can do now. But again, it just made for another awkward decision. Gemini Man for me is just this collection of very, very weird ideas that didn't really add up to anything that I found overly spectacular. And so as much as I appreciate the experiment, as much as I appreciate the work that went into it, it just didn't really do anything for me. So those are my thoughts on Gemini Man. Have you seen it yet? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you like this video? Well, of course you did. You can subscribe to Breaking Banter down there somewhere as well as my other channel, Loverboy, over there somewhere. You can also follow me on Twitter, at Loverboy Media. And if you really, 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 really want to help support this channel, you can support us on Patreon. Thank you so much to anyone doing that already. It really is just the best. And I will see all of you guys in the next video video.